Hi guys and pals and everything in between, it's me Lara and welcome to my channel. I finally got a new mic and I can finally make videos from my computer. And today we're going to talk about a character that I feel is very misunderstood by some people, a character from the Kirby franchise King Diddy. Kirby is one of Nintendo's most popular franchises, with the focus being the little purple Kirby. And among all the characters, one stands out the most, King Diddy. Starting out as the main antagonist of the first game, Kirby's Dream Land, Diddy was gone from being a villain to an ally and even a friend to Kirby. Unlike Bowser or Ganondorf, Diddy is not the main villain of the Kirby franchise. He doesn't even fight Kirby because he wants to in most games. In the games they fight are rare occasions or spin-offs. But I found this specific video that I strongly disagree with. And I'm not alone because the comments seem to share the same personal criticisms that I have with the video. In no way this is an attack to the person who made the video. I myself think their videos are perfectly okay. I just noticed a lot of problems with this specific video regarding DDD's characterization. And with my video, I want to point out some of the points and issues that I have with the video and why I don't believe what they say that DDD is. A villain. Or evil, to be honest. And if you who made the video is watching this, please, I have nothing against you. This is just me pointing out the problems in the video. I hope I don't offend you. This is just my feelings about the video and why I disagree with your points, as well as pointing out the mistakes and problems present in them. Everything pointed out normally? Okay, so this is going to be the video talking about why DDD shouldn't be evil anymore. So I will be skipping the first sections of the video because they don't really add much to the main points I'm going to make during this video. So I'm going to skip the beginning of the video, okay? Okay. He starts talking about the first games of the franchise and the DDD roles in both of them. And he's completely right. DDD is the main antagonist of the first game, stealing all the food from Dreamland, and in the second game, he isn't the main antagonist. He actually kind of just breaks the wishing rod and separates among his friends to prevent Nightmare to emerge. While both his statements about those two games are completely valid, there is a few details that he forgot to mention between the both games, which are things were very important to Diddy's characterization moving forward. At the end of Kirby's Dreamland, after the credits roll, we see Diddy crying over his defeat, with Kirby awkwardly watching him. Diddy leaves the scene in tears and in a few seconds Kirby follows close behind. It's unknown what happened behind the scenes, but many use this moment to point out the possibility that Kirby had comforted him off-screen. This unfortunately is just speculation, but taking into account moments in later entries in the series, who is to say that this wasn't the beginning of the days changing during the series? Another ignored thing was what happened after the end of the fight against Kirby and DDD in Kirby's Adventure. As soon as Nightmare is freed, DDD's first action was to throw Kirby towards him, knowing that only Kirby could save the day. You could say that those moments were the most least important to this video, I just wanted to point it out that he forgot to mention those, one, those important parts of the story of DDD. Kirby 64, for instance, displayed a proud king who doesn't let a chance slip to embarrass Kirby. Even after winning a fight, you can clearly see his inner conflict and if it wasn't for one of his trusty subordinates, maybe he would have never even followed the squad. The first interaction between DDD and Kirby isn't DDD trying to embarrass Kirby, like Really? Is leaving the crystal above his head and pushing Kirby away embarrassing him in any way? This looks like more of an older brother not wanting to give the younger brother a toy or something like that, and not embarrassing him. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for this to be embarrassing. It seems more like he's just petty than actually wanting to embarrass Kirby or something. And about the Waddle D. Well, the Kirby 64 manual, for what I heard, I couldn't find images of the actual manual. I could only find descriptions about it on the Kirby wiki. It says that DDD just only joined the group to protect the main group. I mean, consider that this is the third time in the Dark Matter trilogy 
that he has been possessed against his will, I think it makes sense that he would want to go with the group to protect this group of children that, to not get in danger. Just saying. He doesn't mention in the video, but there are several moments in this game that show that DDD showing genuine concern for the characters. Doing cutscenes, he appears unfazed by Kirby's presence. In another cutscene, he saves Adeline during the hot water Rodawi escape. But sorry, this name is too complicated to say. Hmm? Demonstrating her heroic sense for their safety. In the false ending, he appears crying during the goodbye and in the real ending, he shows concern after Kirby fell down the stairs after removing his hand in the cheek. This game is what started his, this characterization of DDD as someone who cares about those around him. Later in the video, he makes a comment that implies that in your eyes, Diddy only went on this journey with Kirby to look cool in front of Waterloo, which again, it's not true according to the game's manual. I would say this point is the craziest, but I would just say the next part of the video is just plain nonsensical. In this next part of the video, we start to talk about the Kirby anime, Kirby Right Back at ya, in which Diddy is basic cartoon villain, vile, cruel, selfish, horrible, and what he said is the most insanely unbelievable thing I have ever heard. Simply the most far-fetched in the entire video. The reason why the show was so faithful and accurate to its source material is Masahiro Sakurai himself, who overlooked the whole project and made sure everything was done right. It may not be confirmed, but to some extent, it's easy to assume this is the kind of version he imagined the characters to behave all along. But this is probably the kind of King DDD Sakurai still considers the right one, and I could not agree more. He implies... That because Sakurai was involved in the production of the show, he was the one who wanted DDD to be presented like this. And does he have any proof? Nope! He has no proof at all about this. The only information about Sakurai's involvement in the show was that he intended for the show not to have humans and for the show to not have Kirby to speak. That's why Kirby speaks in baby talk. That's all. That's all there is to know about his involvement with the anime. So to say that the decision to make DDD evil in the anime was purely Sakurai's is BS and ignores anyone else who was involved in the show. It's much more likely that the directors and producers of the show wanted the right hand like this to have a central antagonist during the good part of the show. And yet, DDD in this anime demonstrates in two episodes a part of him that he's not 100% bad. This entire point is pure speculative and nothing has been confirmed that it was what Sakurai wanted for the show. And worse than that, that comes later in the video when he talks about Super Smash Bros. Brawl, a game made by Sakurai himself that demonstrates a version of DDD completely opposite to, the, to what he implies in this part of the video. But we will get there. At this point in the franchise, Sakurai is no longer working in the Kirby series. Instead, the series is in Kawasaki's hands. In Revenge of the King, DDD decides to have a last fight with Kirby, challenging him to a battle. This mode in Ultra Star Ultra not only contains one of DDD's best boss fights, but also the real beginning of his journey from a minor antagonist to an actual ally. At the end of this mode, during the final phase, DDD extends a conversation with Banana DD, or Banana Waddle DD ordering everyone to leave the castle so that DDD can fight Kirby alone. But Bandana Waddle Dee refuses and decides to fight Kirby against the king's orders. In the end, DDD is defeated one last time, but in the end, in the credits scene, it shows that his trusty Waddle Dee will always be loyal to him. Honestly, the points made in the video about this mode are very valid. But this would be the last time that DDD was actually considered a villain in the franchise. And oh boy, we get to this point, DDD's most misrepresented moment in the entire video. During the story of Subspace Emissary in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, DDD appears collecting the other fighters, defeating them and turning them into trophies, taking them to his hideout soon after. But apparently, a part of the story that was cut because of time would show that he knew about Tabu's plans to imprison the other fighters, and therefore, he took the initiative to try to prevent this from happening. But, 
This video implies that Diddy Liu was just being selfish and only impersonating the fighters to create a collection of his own. Once again, you have to be aware that this game was directed by Sakurai and King DDD is pretty much the exact version you come to expect. Not necessarily malicious, but with clearly selfish intentions. He collects fighter trophies in order to simply build up a nice collection. Unlike every other antagonist who shows explicit traits of evilness. By the end, he's even basically the savior of the whole game, fights Bowser and is happy to see Kirby again. The affection towards Kirby may contradict my point, but only shows King DDD's true nature. Literally what he says doesn't make any sense when you really see the context of each scene. No, he didn't want to make a collection of fighters. And by the way, how does Daniel qualify as something evil? This is the same as kidnapping. How is that not considered evil and is just considered selfish? That makes no sense. Anyway, the reason he captured them is so he could free them by putting his team badges on them. He even put one on himself in case he turned into a statue too, but as soon as he saw that he didn't give one to Zelda, he gave his with little hesitation. This part ignores the context of the entire story and even tries to imply that this is Diddy's true nature. Nothing he says in this part works when you have the context of his motivations. As soon as he was free from his statue by Luigi and Ness, he would have been furious. But no, as soon as he saw the brooch work on them, he hugged the two of them, happy to see that they are safe. If anything, he is the true hero of Subspace Emissary. The next part of the video is him talking about the next entries of the franchise, having Diddy being an ally more of a trend than an actual character development. That is something that the entire video ignores. The character development factor. At this point of the story, he is just another friend. And the point saying that he will only join Kirby's adventures for selfish or personal reasons doesn't make a lot of sense, as it was never stated that this was the case in any of the games. He skipped both Triple Deluxe and Star Allies, but both being games that DDD has a big appearance. In Triple Deluxe, he's kidnapped by Taranza, being mistaken as the hero of Dreamland. By the end of the game, after being saved, he decides to keep helping Kirby defeat Satuna. In the final battle, not only launching him to fight her, but also freeing him from her vines and waking him up with Aranza's help. And in Star's allies, he has a motivation to be there. In his pal's screen, it's said that he wants to clean his image, deciding to protect his people instead of mistreating them. Then he mentioned Battle Royale. This game isn't considered canon and uses characterizations from the anime instead of the games. So just as he skipped the last few games, I'm going to skip this one because I don't consider it valid. And Kirby's Fighters is a spin-off and doesn't fit with the main timeline of the games. But if you want an interesting characterization of it, read the novels. In one of the novels, Dirty himself is offended when Meta Knights call the Waddle Dees weak. He defends them by calling them hard workers and basically showing that he cares about them a lot. The points about the Forgotten Land is good, but he goes on to imply that Diddy's presence in the Waddle town, where he lays down close to the arena, is him pretending to be the protagonist of the game or something like that. Doesn't make much sense to me. He clearly presents himself as a Zouster and just enjoying a peaceful moment in this new, unfamiliar world, even waving at Kirby when he approaches him. Like, he's just there, chilling. He's a chill dude. The game gives us Oz the gacha machines, which give us the special capsules, which eat descriptions of information about the game and especially DDD. Once he arrived in the Forgotten Land, he tried to find Kirby, but fell under the fact of Fogger's influence. DDD truly considered himself Kirby's rival, but this is more like a friendly rivalry than a hero versus a villain. Rivals don't always have to be mortal enemies. Just people that focus on overcoming the other. See better examples in, of this in Pokemon, in Azum 11, Sonic, and even Dragon Ball of all things. Those examples contain characters who are self-proclaimed rivals of the protagonist, but on many occasions they admire the protagonist and sometimes become friends with them. The best example is Knuckles and Sonic. In from the beginning, Knuckles was considered Sonic's first rival in the franchise, but he's also his friend. Rivalties are not the same as good versus evil. Sometimes it's just a battle of 
who is the strongest or who is the best. In the case of Diddy and Kirby, I would say that Edison has a rival and in the sense that one day he wants to have the least one victory over Kirby. But to prove himself stronger than him somehow. The best rivals are those who bring us challenge to overcome. In other words, what he's trying to proclaim is that DDD's rivalty isn't just DDD seeing himself as a rival to Kirby, it's seeing rivalty in general as something reminiscent of villainy or something like that. That's what I got from the lines of literally using the entire self-proclaimed rival from DDD in this point. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It, I'm sorry, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And that was the video. Sorry if I sounded a bit rude in the video, I just wanted to give my perspective on this video. In no way I am judging the Kirby channel through a different point of view than the rest of the fandom. I just wanted to point out why this video is very weak in terms of pointing out DDD as a villain or an evil villain, which I don't believe he is. I hope you enjoyed the video, I promise bringing more content now that I have my own microphone, but for now that's all that I have. That was Laura Prisma speaking. Bye! Bye.